62. So the wear and tear would eventually wear through the heat shrink, wear through the paper, wear through uh, whatever other insulators there may have been, and allow the battery cells to short together independent of the actual discharge wire. Um, and here's a case you can see very clearly where the way the customer had dismounted, it was bumping up against a piece of metal on their bike, eventually wearing through all the heat shrink and allowing it to short electrically. Um, and, uh, and then to be able to cause the short circuit, you can see the perception of the battery where the cells are short and the current is so high um, that it burns off everything over the tabs there until eventually one of the tabs will fail. Um, I think this is uh, that same battery pack where it could have shorted through on the rear carrier rack. Um, and uh, this was an interesting one too. So this was a customer in Vancouver and he uh, had a, one of our triangle batteries mounted in the frame, and it's supposed to hang from the top tube, but the geometry of his frame meant that the bottom cells were actually touching the bottom part of his bike and resting there, which they weren't supposed to do. And if they were to do that, there should have been some foam strip of padding between it, uh, which he hadn't tried. So that eventually wore it through. Um, you would have thought that this would have caused a bad, nasty short circuit, but it actually never did. So I think it either was hitting that cell or that cell as a bounce around, but never shorting both of them. Um, what happened was, at some point, the battery just stopped delivering at all. It wouldn't really take a charge, it wouldn't really discharge. And when we measured it, we found that this one cell um, had a huge bulk. Like, if you're trying to charge it, all you, you get, like, you know, all the other cells would be 1.2 volts, this cell would be 10 volts. And if you try to discharge it, this cell would be negative 10 volts. So it had an extremely high internal resistance. And when we look closely, all of that bang against the bike actually cracked the metal can. And once you crack the can, now you're closed environment is open, all the water and electrolytes can escape and evaporate, you have no water or electrolytes, there's no conductivity. So um, his cell, uh, his battery wasn't working because of that bad cell. So uh, this was a battery that had seen about two years of use. So we were, we were trying to say, listen, like, the nickel metal hydride, it's not really going to last that much longer, it's probably not worth the effort, why don't we just upgrade you to a lithium, we can give you a discount. But, we really wanted to get his mileage out of this battery pack. So we replaced the cell for him, and to our total astonishment, <laughs> um, it worked fine. Like, with the replacement cell, the battery behaved fine again. He came back in July 10th of this year, so this is three years later, and his 8 amp hour battery is still giving a full 7 amp hour, there's no signs of cell reversal. Um, and that was wonderful. I wish we knew. Why? Because there's other people with the same battery treating them even more gently who have no end of failures. Or, uh, different climate? What's that? Is he a different climate than the other people? No, I, I think one thing is actually he's a regular user. One thing we did notice, so I ever showed you before the cell wall being out of balance, but then after you charge and discharge them, eventually they come all to be at the same state of charge. Um, a lot of people will leave their batteries unused for a while. That allows them to go out of balance. And often when they come back with a problem, it's because it's the first time that they charge or run their e-bike after it's been in storage for a while. Um, and so it hasn't had a chance to rebalance at low current, and they immediately subject it to high currents on an electric bike, and then that problem is resolved. Um, but I can't say, there's others who use the bike every day, and it lasts the battery after four or five months. It's complete. Um, and, uh, but there's really been no rhyme or reason that we've been able to discern. So um, that just the this is but what I'm saying now basically applies equally to NICAD and metal hydride. We've seen the cells exploding happen a lot more in NICAD. Uh, I think we never had an instance of nickel metal, but two other vendors that I know who deal with nickel metal have had. But the thing about making the batteries sit for a while and then then you get it from that doesn't happen to It doesn't happen to the no. Um and uh so yeah, sometimes it was from an uh, unidentifiable source. So one period in 2000, I guess this was early 2009, we were just having a way higher number of batteries having issues after three to four months when they tested fun on our test station and they were coming back to us to test them, there'd be cell reversals. And uh, when we started trying to hone in on the matter, we identified, uh, at least we think we identified one of the main culprits, and that's that the company that manufactured the battery charges changed the algorithm that they used to determine when the battery stops charging. And whatever change they made made it more sensitive to terminate the charge rather than allowing it to overcharge. And the idea is that most of the damage to a battery happens at the very end of the charging cycle. When you put in that extra bit, the battery gets warm. Um, that's when the cell, the innards start to deteriorate. Now, I'm not, I don't understand all the details of how, but that's the sort of empirical understanding. Um, and so 
battery packs like in the Prius that have to go through thousands and thousands of charges, they carefully make sure that the cells never get more than 80, 85% charge and never get fully discharged. In that zone, they tend to have a much longer, a much greater cycle life. Um, so it could be that the company making these battery chargers try to take that knowledge and then make their own chargers terminate more easily. So when we put the uh, battery packs on with the, this newer batch of chargers and look at the charge curve, you see the voltage goes up and then it's starting to hit the peak and then it just stops, the charger stops charging completely. And we don't actually see it roll over. If we then plug that exact same battery pack into the charger from the year before, it looked the same with the same model number, same price, a different number of LEDs, so they had changed the circuit on it. Um, you can see that it charges up, and rather than stopping the charge here, it goes that extra little bit. And so it overcharges it enough for the battery to get warm, the voltage to drop, which allows any unequal cells to balance up. Um, and if we look at the next two photos, uh, here's exactly one of those cases. So this is a 48 volt battery purchased in February, and then in October, he's saying that, listen, this thing is like down to 60% of what it used to be, the piece of crap that's going on. We test it out, and we find that we get the reversal happening at 8 amp hours when it was originally a 12 amp hour battery. At that point, the performance uh, feels a lot worse. Um, so then we put it on with one of our older chargers that didn't have that newer charge algorithm that would overcharge a bit. And what do you see? Lo and behold, it gets a full balancing charge cycle and it lasts a full 11 amp hours before you start to get a couple of reversals. And so, in an effort to <coughs> increase the life of these nickel batteries, because there wasn't adequate balancing going on, they actually drastically reduced the effective lifespan of the battery. Um, and uh, um, in other cases, you're saying batteries up. Oh, yeah, I'm just wondering, well, why would that work for the Prius and not work in this case for the, the battery technology? Or? <coughs> it's, it's definitely a different type of, uh, I mean, the Prius uses a prismatic battery pack that's made for high charge and discharge first, and I think they monitor the pressure in the cell. I don't, you know, I think to, 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 um, I think the Prius actually has battery management system that like within their modules they can make sure that there's no individual cells going out of balance and it could be that the standards that they're made don't drift apart. So the, the batteries that we've been getting, if you just let them sit, like I say, some discharge on their own at different rates than others and that's what results in them being out of balance and uh, it might be that the spec on the Prius cells is that's one of the specifications is how closely together are they matched for the self-discharge and uh, and normally when they build, like if you go to the battery companies that manufacture these packs, they have thousands and thousands of cells and every cell is tested to figure out all the characteristics exactly on the amp and they're binned together. And they build the battery packs out of cells all from the same bin. But some companies can be much more refined in their binning and only have variations of 0.1%, whereas others it's sort of a 3% range. And I suspect that the companies we were dealing with being lower volume companies were the only ones who will deal with this small business like ours um, didn't have that level of consistency because um, they didn't have that such a huge volume of cells that they can bid from. Yeah. An outsider, you know, listening to this so far, yeah. really has a question about QC. Mm -hmm. that would not a lot of your problems evaporate if you had uh, suppliers who were rigorous on QC? Yes. And you touched on another point here yeah. briefly. And it is that the inconsistencies may have to do with the fact that your suppliers have to buy